Good morning, Reptilians. Welcome, welcome back to my channel. So it's a new year. It is 2020. I hope you guys all had an amazing new year and hopefully you were safe and all that jazz. I thought that I would start this year out by cleaning tanks because that's what I'm going to be doing all year is cleaning tanks. I wanted to clean out Theon, my Pac-Man Frogs tank, because you guys haven't seen him in a while and he's grown a pretty good amount and he is like never on here and I just wanted to have him on here. I'm also going to be adding a drainage layer to his tank because the Eco Earth works wonderfully for him because it doesn't get dry so it doesn't get dusty. But I have noticed lately that it has a problem where on the sides of the glass little air pockets will form with the eco earth and mold is kind of starting to grow there and this has kind of been a problem that keeps happening so in order to combat that we are going to put a drainage layer in the bottom we are going to be using hydro balls this time as opposed to just straight gravel like i do sometimes because he's a frog and they absorb things through their skin and i just want to make sure that it is 100 the safest that it could possibly be for him so we're going to do that and i'm also going to make his eco earth layer pretty thick this time he is pretty deep in that tank so we're gonna make it really thick so that way as he digs down to the bottom hopefully he never actually gets to the bottom I don't think it matters if he does because people put Pac-Man frogs in bioactive tanks all the time but just in case I want to make sure that he has a very thick layer on top of that drainage layer so that he's not getting it down in that mesh screen but I'll stop talking now and we can build that tank Okay, so basically you can kind of see down here at the bottom where there's like mold, not the little dry pockets, but the little white areas here and here is where it's actually kind of moldy. So we're going to put the drainage layer in to try to prevent that, but I'm also going to be adding a lot more substrate into this just to lift him up. That's going to give him a deeper dig area and that's going to make it easier on me to feed him because I'm not leaping into a tank every time I need to feed him. All right, so I have already expanded my plantation soil for this tank basically you just stick the brick in water the instructions are actually on the package and you just let it sit and it is good to go you don't want this soil to be sopping wet and you also don't want it to have dry pockets either because it's going to be going into the tank i also have my hydro balls the package says to rinse them first so i have also done that and now we can actually get started. So I have a little plastic critter keeper that I'm going to use to put him into while I'm cleaning out this tank. Sorry that my hair is in the way. I am terrible with the camera, apparently. I have a glove on so that I'm not touching his skin directly because again, Pac-Man frogs, just like all frogs do, absorb things through their skin and I didn't want to take any risk there. And then of course I took everything out and cleaned and sanitized it all. And of course took the tank out and cleaned it as well. Well, and it's clean aside from that brown spot on the back this tank originally came as like a setup kit and it had a built-in background and that background will not come off it's like fused with the glass but anyways I am now adding the hydro balls for the drainage layer normally when I put a drainage layer in a bioactive tank it serves just to drain the water away from the roots of the plant so that the plants won't rot but in this case it is going to yes still serve as a way for the water to go down in the substrate so the substrate isn't staying soaked but it's also going to just aerate the substrate and hopefully prevent our mold problem I've done this in the past with my crested geckos and it always works so hopefully it works this time as well and then I'm just measuring out some mesh screen to act as a barrier between the drainage layer and the substrate I'm going to put two layers of this because this is just normal mesh screen that you would get from like Walmart and the holes are a little bigger than an actual drainage layer so I like to put two layers down and then it's just time to add in all that eco earth sorry about the glare I thought the camera was in focus and it wasn't but I'm just dumping in all that eco earth I think I used a brick and a half once it's all in I do like to pat it all down pretty firmly so that way he has a nice solid area to dig down into and then it's just a matter of putting all the things back in the tank. For the most part, it's going to be arranged the same way that it was before. I am removing that little clay pot that was in there because he can't fit in it anymore. And I'm also moving the tree farther back. And I'm taking out that extra leaves that were on the back so they don't fit with the higher substrate. But for the most part, it's all just going to kind of stay the same. And we have a bowl full of springtails here. So when I very first set up the 
Brown's very first tank, I put springtails and leaf litter and everything in it. And then when I moved him to the second tank, I guess some of those kind of just came along and they repopulated in this tank. I never put springtails in his tank anymore and they always tend to collect in that water dish. So I just kind of keep them in that tank. Usually I just blow them off of the water bowl into the soil, but I had just given him clean water and they instantly collected back there. So I just kind of dumped that water back into the tank to put those springtails back in there because they do a really good job of cleaning up his waste. And of course, this fresh water that I just put in the tank has already been treated with RepiSafe. Frogs do absorb a lot through their skin, so we don't want him absorbing chlorine through his skin, so it has already been treated. And I guess I thought my camera was recording, but apparently it wasn't, but I put him back into the tank. And of course, he was a little stressed out because he did not like that plastic critter keeper at all. So he just kind of moped around a little bit, but he is doing wonderfully now. And this is the final result. I didn't get as much eco earth in there as I wanted to, but that's because if I put any more in, my little tree would be touching the ceiling and I wanted to keep that in there. But it's thicker than it was before and it came out pretty good. I did end up moving a couple things around because I moved the heat pad. I wanted him to be able to get all the way to the back to get up against the wall with the heat pad if he needed to, but yeah. And just for comparison, here's a picture of Theon the day that I got him and him now. He's grown quite a lot. But that is it guys. I think it turned out really good and I am happy and excited about him being in this new tank and hopefully that drainage layer will kind of aerate that soil. It'll allow air to pass through the soil a little more and not mold. I have done this previously in my Crested Gecko and my Gargoyle Gecko's tanks before they were on bioactive setups when mold would form and it would kind of counteract that and fix that. So hopefully it fixes this one as well. But that's it. As always, if you are not already, please feel free to follow me on my other socials and like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time I put out a new video, which is every Sunday. Huge thank yous and shout outs to Danny Cochran for following me on Instagram and going through and liking a whole bunch of my stuff. Thank you so much, Danny. You are the bee's knees. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. Random animal groups. <laughs>